still deciding what it is I'm going to do today. I've looked at the mountains and they've got some cloud clinging to the top of them. Might be, might be a little bit of um, fog in the valleys as well. So I think I'm going to drive towards um, Hlyn Ogwen and, um, and see about some compositions around there. Continue for three quarters of a mile. like um, playing Twister, working with a tripod in this. What first attracted me about, um, about this, this little area of the rapids is these two, two boreholes uh, and a third one there in the, in the rock here. Um, so I started working with those and then after I've been working with those for a little while, uh, using this water pool as a leading line, um, I saw this kind of um, fan fracture pattern on the, um, on the top of this rock. You can't really see it. With a polarizer on it, it comes out beautifully. It's like this gorgeous red color uh, once, you take the, um, once you take the reflective sheen off. Um, so I've been working on that for a while. I can't quite get the composition how I like it. I think when those mountains reveal themselves, uh, it might work a little bit better. So I'm going to sit on this for a little while. The thing that's been really troubling me about this composition is this very prominent rock here. Um, it's really hard to know how to, um, how to angle to either leave it out or feature it. Um, in the end, I've, um, I've gone for it within the composition um, and made it into a feature. So, so now that I've embraced that, it actually acts as a nice kind of crisscross pattern composition. Well, it looks like these clouds are in for a little while and looking on the back of the camera I'm fairly happy with, um, with what I got from this composition so I think I'm going to move on. I might head down to the waterfall opposite Trifan and get that classic, um, classic shot. I haven't visited that location for a number of years so I'll be, um, be quite up there having a little walk, um, getting in some steps and, and taking a shot. Trevan's currently in deep in cloud, so it should be, um, yeah, could be a nice shot. So I'm hiking up the hill north of Trevan. I want to see whether I can give more focus to an interesting foreground, whether there's some nice patterns in the rocks, as well as obviously the lovely leading lines of the waterfall. So I'm uh, rock hopping uh, around these uh, this rapids here. I've got a I've got a system 
with uh, with my trail runners where I bring waterproof socks and then just accept that I'm going to get my feet wet. Only problem this time, I didn't bring any waterproof socks, so feet are quite soggy at the moment. When I'm um, when I'm rock hopping and trying to find compositions, I'm doing a number of things. I'm visualising what the water will look like with a polarizer on, so any shapes of the rocks underneath, uh, any colours, algae or redstone. And then I'm also thinking about the shape of Trivan when it emerges from the cloud, because Trivan's got that lovely, almost a kind of platonic uh, ideal of a, of a mountain shape. So while I'm composing, I need to bear that in mind, uh, how it's going to look and any mirroring shapes that I can find within the foreground. Unfortunately, this is the point where the video camera ran out of battery, but you didn't miss much. The light never happened, and the clouds didn't lift from the peak of Trivan. I do want to talk you through my composition though, because I think it has potential. So I spoke of the triangular shape of Trivan, and what I was looking for with the anticipation of the clouds lifting were echoes of that in the foreground, and I found a few in this particular scene which I really liked. There is this triangle here, one here, a kind of inverted triangle, and one here that almost looks like the wingspan of a B-2 stealth bomber. What I also really liked about this scene was the shapely tree. My plan is to come back here in the snow and get a really minimalist version of this image, with the tree stark black against white. But equally, a bit of side lighting might do the trick and raise this image. So this seems to be a repeated theme, this trip. Spending the day travelling around somewhere else and then returning to almost exactly the same place later that day for the evening. This time I've um, come back to these uh, groins on Ogwen Beach um, because I wanted to see them at high tide. Uh, this is not quite right. It's, um, well, atmospheric stormy clouds, so it'll work. But, um, I think I'd want uh, stormier conditions and maybe some rain uh, creating some separation from that background but nice to see what it looks like at high tide. I'm sure I'll come back here another time. Of the two images here, the compositions have potential but the conditions weren't quite right. Although the texture of the foreground rocks is pleasing, and the clouds lifted to reveal the ridge line of Devil's Kitchen. The image needed more dynamic light or a prominent subject to be a keeper. I'm glad I returned to the groins at high tide to see the lay of the land. I had to make this a black and white conversion as the muddy water of the Menai Strait looked messy in colour. This composition would suit Blue Owl and I look forward to returning to it in the future. As I began my journey home, I was pleased with what I had been able to achieve on this trip. I explored areas that I had on my radar for a number of years, and importantly left unfinished business. Ernest Hemingway talks of working until he had something done, and stopping when he knew what was going to happen next. That way he could be sure of what he was going on to the next day. I've heard this technique spoken to as the Hemingway Bridge. I think of loose ends at the end of a trip as my Hemingway Bridge, a bookmark in the landscape to pick up on where I left off. I'm glad I went home when I did. As I drove south to Bristol, the rain came in heavy, and I was glad not to be car camping that evening. I've always made video diaries of my trips, but this is the first that I decided to edit and publish. I was worried that making a vlog might take away from the photography, but I'm pleased to say it didn't. In fact, I found vlogging enhanced my experience. Where usually I might be very goal-orientated and focused on the shot, Looking for details for B-roll made me pay even more attention to the wider landscape. 
As you may be able to tell, I put this series together on a budget. If you've watched this far, thank you for bearing with the shoddy sound and sometimes noisy footage. As I record this, I'm already planning my autumn trip to the northwest highlands of Scotland, and I've taken what I've learnt from this Wales trip to improve my video setup. I hope a stereo mic and a second camera body will make my next outing a more immersive experience for you. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you before too long.